Look at him say, get somewhere and sit down. You need to turn that Facebook off. Don't they be doing that? Hey, they, they just on there watching what you say, your response, everything. And they're not the only ones watching. The government is watching too. That's how they know to send the, 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 the loaded vaccine to your area. It's a whole different color. <laughs> your vaccine got to be warmed up on the stove before they give it to you. <laughs> it got stuff in it that have to be activated. <laughs> Or look at somebody and say, overcoming pride. Oh, the worst demon there is. Pride is the worst demon there is. I have proof, and it's right here. Proverbs 6 and 16 through 19. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are what? An abomination unto him. What's the first thing? The first one out of the seven things that God hates is pride. A proud look, thinking you are better than you are. When none of us are good, there is none righteous, no, not one. Amen? So you ain't good. I don't care how well you trying to live, you're not good. Have somebody... Message me, brother, you, you sure will say ain't a whole lot. Don't you know that's gr grammatically uh, 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 wrong and incorrect and you should be using you know. I told him, I said, well, listen to somebody that don't say it. Man, I'm 51. I'm going to be saying it till Jesus comes. That's the way I talk. You know I was country? They just look for something to deflect off themselves. Like, brother, that message got you, didn't it? Oh, it wasn't the ants. <laughs> Amen. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not fashioning my speech to get likes and views. What would y'all do if y'all saw me on there with some glasses on? Oh, yes, and God has said that there are many that. <laughs> so he done went crazy. I wouldn't be able to come home. But these six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are abomination. The first thing he says is a proud look. So we have to make sure, and then we know the rest, lying tongue, hands of shed, innocent blood, all of those things. These are the things that he hates. He, you know, he could have named more than seven. If there was more than seven, he named the seven things. Yeah. Yeah, and folks try to deflect, oh, what about all the other sins? All y'all talk about is abortion. That's because abortion is in the seven. And see, these are, these are the things that get the, the, you know, get the folks that think they're holy. The folks that think they're holy fail this test. Because all of them in there. They also shed innocent blood running folks off with the hatred. Oh, wicked imagination and running the mess, mess and gossiping and all that. See, they, just, they think because they're not fornicating or committing adultery that they, they, they're good. They're better than somebody. But you sit up and talk about folks. That's one of the seven. I appreciate it here, man. I ain't worried about you. But what you try to do, you, you, can't, you can't change God's list. This is how he feels. A false witness speaking lies. You agreeing with somebody and you didn't see it. This is on his list. So is discord in folks' ear trying to change their mind about somebody. Pride. This is a pride house right here. Little baby just want to play with a toy. And you already. <laughs> the way he throws that toy. The way he was kicking it around. I think we need to get him in some classes. So we can make it some money. <laughs> ah, pride. Amen. Pride comes from failure. Mm. Yeah, pride comes from failure. Feeling failure. When a person fails at something or fails someone, they use pride to cover it up. Yeah. 
That's where pride comes from. Failure. This is why it's important for us to own our mistakes and admit our wrongs. When you own your mistake, admit your wrongs, you, 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 do, you do away with pride. But if you can't admit you're wrong, you're going to be proudful. You're going to try to cover up your wrong. It's much easier to admit it than cover it up because cover-ups are perpetual and something you must keep doing. So you don't have to just cover it up once. You got to keep covering up and keep covering up. And the more you cover it up, the less you're covering it up. Folk don't think that their life tells on them. I ain't listening to what you say. Brother, look at your life. Yeah, look at your life. Brother, don't tell me you are young. See, Doc, when I get my million, and God has told me that I'm a millionaire, well, you a chicken dinner heir now. I don't want to hear that. I, 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 and that's why, that's why some of these churches are closed and they'll never open again. Because they let them false prophets in there promising folks money. In exchange for them giving money. Y'all seen that in church? Calling out stuff and calling people up and prophesying money. God ain't telling nobody that. But you prophesy a business plan on them. <laughs> prophesy savings. Oh, I speak. Oh, I speak. I speak savings account. Can we learn to do that first? Why would God give you a million dollars and you gonna go spend it on a car? First thing you go buy is the most depreciative thing that there is. A car. If you even think of that, man, if I had a million, boy, I'd be driving. If you even saying that, you'll never have it. You'll never have it if they give it to you, you won't have it. You know, you got to be disciplined to have money. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Having money is almost, I would almost say it's a gift to keep it. You see folks win the lottery and be in worse shape than they were when they won it. Brother, you went and bought nothing but Gucci jumpsuits. <laughs> MCM everywhere. Carpet in the house, MCM. <laughs> Got the whole Carl Kanai collection. <laughs> All the boots. You bought him out of business. <laughs> Only hood folk know that joke. That's why I'm laughing. Only hood folk. <laughs> Them boots and you leave a tag and everything on it. Price tag, everything. You leave everything the store put on it. You leave it on there. I be walking around making all kind of noise. Jingle, jangle, jingle. <laughs> Folk that grew up well to do, they sitting like, what? <laughs> it's called Kanai. But that meant you came up in the hood. You walk in with them creased jeans. Them big old pockets. Pockets was just from here all. I mean, you could put a whole pool stick in that pocket. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> it's much easier to admit it than cover it up. You know, they say it's always better to tell the truth because it's easier to remember. Look at everybody. Yeah, that's true. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> tell the, look at somebody say, tell the truth. Tell the truth and deal with the consequences early. Because consequences only get worse when you prolong them. James 5 and 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be what? Heal. The Bible is telling you, come clean. Just, just, just come clean. Look at somebody and say, come clean. Now, you don't tell everybody your business. Everybody can't handle your business. Some of them will keep your business and try to use it against you. Amen. So I'm not saying that. So 
So it's got to be somebody you trust. If you're a wife, then you better be telling your husband. If you're a husband, you better be telling you. You don't have a confidant deeper than that relationship. Oh, can I preach? Pride can be birthed through the failure of a father or mother to live up to their own desired prestige. When they do not become who they feel they should have, many times they push their children to excel to prove their own worth and value. Living in their children, vicariously, they live through their children, successes, and use them to gloat over others. Amen. In front of the anus, baby, tell them, say your ABCs. You just seven months. The girl said clearer now. She can say, I'm like, oh, she did it at home. Just showing out. Because her reputation's bad. That's what it is. Her reputation's bad. She already potty trained. She just three months. She don't you know. Watch, watch. Her. Sitting on the toilet. She just. Show it out. <laughs> Living vicariously through the children to prove something. Proverbs 20, 26, train up a child in the way they should go. Not the way you want them to go, the way they what? Should go. We want our children successful and good at things. But we can't manipulate that for our own benefit. Amen. And everything they do isn't a sign of what they're going to become. Amen. <laughs> Came in with a sick dog from the neighborhood. Mama, the dog's sick. He got hit by a car. Oh, I see veterinarian. Forget the dog. Let me come lay hands on you, baby. What? Mama, but what about the dog? <laughs> Just, <laughs> baby, don't have a chance because you're trying to live and prove something through them. This is sad right here. Men that fail at leading their homes, so you can be in the home and do this. You know there are men that's in the home and failed at leading it when the woman took over. When, it's okay. About eight or nine amens up here. That's okay. It's going to get preached any, either way because the man is the head of the home. Man is the head of the woman as Christ is the head of the church. Amen? Is that not Bible? Can I preach Bible in here? Okay, well then I'm not worried about the way you look at it. Don't bother me. Because Yo, your house isn't like this. Because this is what the word says. So when a man fails to lead his home, if he's in it, or men that abandon their children through divorce or even wedlock, many times use their children to feel better about their decision to abandon them. So when they're not in the home, they're pushing their children to excel to make it look like what they did wasn't a bad decision. I know I just preached. Yeah, they will push their sons to be athletes or do something that can yield them big money so they can feel better about the abandonment. Now see, if I stayed in the house, you wouldn't be in the NBA. I know they say that. That's why I said it. Look how good. See, see how things worked out. But when he's not on the court, he's in bed with 10 women and two men at a time. You think something's not wrong with him? He's drunk every weekend when he's not on the court. Every off season, he's high. They will push their daughters. This is the worst one to strive and position themselves in society so they don't need a man to take care of them at all. That's why they're against the creation role message. They hate the creation role message. They want to prove the creation role message false. Why? Because they never took care of nobody. They ain't take care of their daughter. They ain't take care of their wife. 
So now they got to make it like something's wrong with that. They do this because it releases them of the guilt of not taking care of their daughters themselves. So they pushing their daughters to excel, pushing them through school, pushing them, get in, go on and take them long. Girl, get them long. Girl, have $300,000 worth of loans so she can, so he can say she graduated. Now she's an independent woman. You don't need no man to take care of you. You take care of yourself. Why is he saying that? Because he didn't take care of you. He failed and it birthed pride. I know. Oh, boy. Yeah, pushing their daughters. They, they do this because it releases them. If a husband comes along to provide for them, it incriminates the father that didn't do it. So he don't even like him. I need you to go find your equivalent. You too good for him. He trying to take you from your career. And he trying to take, he's saying that because he, all of this is what? Pride. All of this is pride. Poor little girl. That's what, that's what messed these women up in this time, 2021. These women scared of getting married. You talk to some of them, oh, I don't feel like I'm ready to marry. Why are you not ready to marry? Because I don't have nothing to bring to the table. Bring to the table. That's all my wife had to do was bring her. That's it. I will do the rest. I will do the rest. I did it when I was broke. And I do it with money. Because I'm a man and that's what men do. Just bring yourself. That's all you got to do. Bring your pretty self. I'll keep you pretty. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mark 3 and 27, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods unless he first do what? Find a strong man. So that's all the devil want to do is make men have this old crazy mentality so he can take the kids. Take the hope out of the house. Hope is gone because you a jive sucker. And took the hope out the house. Trying to be prideful and brag on something you didn't have nothing to do with. How you bragging on your daughter's money and you didn't give her nothing? She took out nothing but loans and you bragging, yeah, well, my daughter's in school. She said, you ain't paying for it. <laughs> Children that grow up under these circumstances usually have low self-worth and will use pride to prove their value to others. So now the pride doesn't trickle down from your foolishness, now the child is acting like this. And they have low self-worth because they're nothing but a striver. They don't even see themselves as a human being. Now they see themselves as a human doing. You didn't validate their existence. You validated their ability. So you change the way they see everything. This pridefulness makes it hard to serve God. While they are praying to God, they are desiring him to make them great or special. Every time they pray, they're praying for things. Because they feel entitled to things. Because things is all they know. That proves their worth to their daddy. Yeah, they just do crazy stuff. These men going to have to give an account for it. Going to have to do, give an account for it. They will usually have an unnatural desire to make money, excel in the eyes of men, and to be lifted up above others. So that's what happened to this generation. 
And then all they did was gave them social media and made them even more crazy. Now they have an unnatural desire to make money. You know what that is? Everything is about money. That's this generation. Everything's about views and likes. Approval. Because their parents didn't do the job and approve of them for just being human. Amen. Your son should, be a, should have your approval just because he looked like you. Amen. Your daughter, just because she came from you, they ought to be approved of. Shouldn't have anything to do with what they're going to become. Well, I mean, they need to become something. I don't want to think. If they're watching you, they're going to become something. If, 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 that's if you're doing what you're supposed to do. Ain't no boy going to sit up and watch his daddy work, work hard, take care of the family, all that, and then be a bum. It don't, that don't happen. It's impossible for that to happen. Now, he may not do it the way you did it, but he's going to do it. If that's what he saw in the house. Amen. So we need to set examples for the children. You don't have to have long talks with them. Long talks don't work with children, no way. Their attention span ain't long enough for your sermon. Hey. <laughs> and see, son, see. But they usually have an unnatural desire. So pride makes a person do exactly what the devil did. That's why God named it first. Because when you're proudful or have a proud look, you're doing what the devil did. I don't think anybody in history made God madder than the devil did when he started his coup and tried to take over heaven. That had to make God pretty upset because that's going to change history, the history of the earth. So pride makes a person do exactly what the devil did. He tried to use the ability God gave him to be lifted up even above himself. Pride makes you foolish. So the devil tried to use what God gave him. And that's what I'm saying. Everything you have isn't for you to make money. Uh-oh. I'm going to let that marinate for a second. You can't sell everything. Everything can't be about money. Yeah, people just, that's the way they think. It's about the money. It's about the money. See, this is my gift, and my gift is making room for me. <laughs> and that is not what that scripture meant. That scripture had nothing to do with money. And music isn't a gift and talent. It, music ain't a gift anyway. Anybody in here can do it. All you got to do is practice. But see, you can practice, but you just don't have, like, it. That's a whole other sermon I got to preach at another time. Because folk really believe it's a gift. That my gift, my gift, my... No, 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 no. It's a talent. It just takes practice. Anybody can be a rapper. All you got to do is rap. You can rap like Jay Bryan if you've been rapping as long as Jay Bryan. You just started. You ain't going to be good. Rap like Devin. Devin been rapping from the womb. You, you, you ain't going to be as good as him. Yeah, so if it's a gift, that, I mean, that's all it is. It's just a talent. Anybody can practice it, and anybody can get good at it. You can run fast. You can be the fastest runner on earth if you practice. Start young, amen. You can outrun, outrun nobody till you lose some weight. That, that's a big factor. You seen runners? That's all it takes, though, just committing to do it. That's, and I'm, this is actually a good message for the young people. You can do, I mean, it just takes a commitment. You ain't going to get good at anything if you don't put time in it. You want to play basketball? You better get out there and practice. You want to be real good? Practice when the others aren't practicing. Oh, I preach in here. I will preach in here. I mean, one time they got up and testified. You know, my dad, I had to correct him. I love my daddy, but I had to correct him. He got up and said, man... I don't know where my son learned how to play. He just jumped up one day and just started playing. I, and then after service, I said, Daddy, that didn't happen. I was practicing. When y'all was taking Tanya to her lessons, I was getting her books. And I was teaching myself to do it. Because I wanted to be better than her. <laughs> really, I did. I was like, no, nah, she's getting too much attention with this piano. So I took her books and taught myself. 
taught myself how to read music, everything. But I put time in it. When everybody else was playing, I was practicing. Amen. Amen. You heard the messages? Oh, God, that's a word. You got a word. That take time. I got to spend time with the Lord. Look at somebody say, everything takes time. If you want to be good at it, it's going to take time. Quit being just schizophrenic with your life. You can do everything, man. I can do a little of something. Yeah, but you ain't master of nothing. Jack of all trades, but master of none. I don't need nobody that can do a little sum of everything. Just a handyman of life. Just, do a, just know a little something about everything. But don't none of it add up to nothing. Hey Amen. That's for the young folks, y'all. Y'all better hear me. Pride makes a person do what the devil did because he tried to lift himself up. Isaiah 14 and 13 explains it. It says, For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit up on the mount of the congregation and in the sides of the north. This is pretty ambitious for the devil to say. Ascend into heaven and exalt his throne above the stars of God? But that's this generation. They just want to blow up. Everybody want to be big. A prideful person is the one that sees their life the way they see things. Everyone else knows they are hiding their true selves and covering up the truth about their lives, don't they? Everybody, well, you know that when it's a prideful person. Because as soon as they walk away, I can't stand them. They think they something and everybody know they nothing. Ain't that what you say when they walk up? Look, nobody <laughs> Wait a minute. That's backbite. No, that's facts. Everybody know. I mean everybody know. But the prideful person really believes that people believe them. They'll sit up and just lie, brother. Yeah, and this and that. As soon as you walk off, you be like, did he just lie? And they walked off believing you believed them. You crazy. The devil really believed he could be like the most high. You heard what he said. He wouldn't have said it if he didn't believe it. I'm going to be higher than high. Higher than most high. Okay, most high is most high. So it is impossible to be higher than most high. He's for crazy. That's how crazy pride makes you. Isaiah 14 and 16, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. Talking about the devil when he's cast down and they're going to consider thee and say, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? Is this all he is? Can I keep going? Pride also causes people to only tolerate you or use you, but never truly care about you. This is a lonely life to live. This is why you got to drop pride, because you're going to be lonely. I didn't say alone. I said, you can be with people and be lonely. You're lonely because don't nobody want to be around you, because you're prideful. There's no correcting you. You correcting everybody. You find fault in everyone. You talk up stuff to make it sound better than what it is. You compare yourself to folks. Anybody get something good, you got to down it to make yourself feel better. Can't be happy for nobody because you didn't get it. Can't pray for nobody because all your prayers are about you. So you can get it. That's a lonely life to live. Prideful person always finds themselves lonely and feeling that nobody really cares about them. And it's usually the truth. <laughs> it's hard to care about a prideful person. Yeah. Can I tell the truth in here? It's hard to care about a prideful It's hard to care about some of y'all that's prideful. I try. I try to love you with the love of the Lord. But your pride won't let me. Amen. Hey, brother, you know, the Lord showed me something. I just kind of want to help you with something. I know. Okay, you know, but I just thought I'd do I mean, God already told me. I, he, I, I already prayed about Man, God, I already been dealing with me, man. I 
<laughs> I can't like you. Like, I can't like, like, I don't like you. It bothers me to see you. Can I just be honest? I'm going to be honest. I don't want to talk to you. Don't, don't, don't call me. Don't email me. I don't want to talk to you. Because it's hard to talk to you. Because pride won't let you submit to the authority that you gave me. Oh, oh that just... Because uh, 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 nobody drug you in here. Like nobody held a gun to your head and said, Go to ABC! Like nobody's keeping you here. And yet you won't let me be who you say I am. That's pride. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah, it's usually the truth. Nobody likes you. Because a prideful person has to mentally abuse others to feel good about themselves. And I don't want to be around nobody that's mentally abusing everybody. Turn everybody down. Oh, sister so-and-so them got a new house. Did you see that house? Yeah, but I heard that the depreciative value in that area. Is that... I mean, you done went and took soil samples? <laughs> Did estimates and surveys? You got to just put a whole, you done printed documents out. That's too much investment in hateration. <laughs> ah! So they mentally abuse people to feel good about themselves. They usually alienate themselves from others and are just not likable. You just can't like anybody that knows everything. That's prideful. It's prideful when you know everything. These brothers know how I am. Boy, I tell them in a minute. Even if I know something and I see them doing it a different way, I, sometimes I will just not say anything. Let them have the experience of trying it and failing. <laughs> I mean, but because of my age, I've seen things and I know some things, but I don't know nearly, I don't know even close to everything. And I don't carry myself like I do. People give you that reputation when you know some things, especially when you're good at something. Then they, you know, when they're mad at you, they, you know everything. No, but I know what you did. And I know what that's going to add up to. Yeah, Proverbs 13 and 15. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is what? So the prideful person, your way is going to be hard and lonely. Nobody's going to like you. My family don't none of them like me. See, cause they, they can't handle the type of Christian I am because I'm just trying to. <laughs> well, when you go around them, won't you just love them like family? Yeah. Amen. Don't be hiding behind the truth behind hip hop. Flashing DVDs, throwing them angrily. Play this. <laughs> you can't get nowhere like that. Let it come. Listen, y'all. I'm, I'm going to give y'all a very good tip. This is a great tip. Let it come to you. When it comes to you, it's God. But when it's you going to it, it's you. I just want to help them, Pastor. Let it come to you. I promise you one day that phone's going to ring. Or you're going to get that message, that email, something. And they're going to say, hey, brother, I remember one time we was talking and you mentioned such and such about your pastor. What? What? What's his name? Where's his video? Yeah. Can you send me that video? Let me see it. The day will come. Let, look, somebody say, let it come to you. Yeah. Let it come to you. Yeah. Don't be an indoctrinator. Because when you become an indoctrinator, you forget how long it took for you to get the truth. You forget all of the prayers it took for you to act right when you was in your foolish state. You don't even give people that kind of grace. I know I'm preaching. This is good to me. Five things. Five things about pride, and then we're going to bring this to a close. Y'all enjoy this? Folks don't like pride messages because it hits everybody somewhere. 
Because we all want to feel good about what we have. Amen. We all want to do that. Amen. We want to floss a little bit when we drink, getting dressed. You want to dress nice. Amen. But you don't dress nice to make somebody else look bad. Or nice so you can talk about what somebody else, what they don't have. Amen. There's nothing wrong with looking nice and having nice things. I like nice things. Amen. But I'm not trying to throw it in nobody's face. Because I don't forget. I remember when. Whoa. Whoa. We remember when. We reminisce all the time. Amen. Broker than broke. You know how broke broke is? I was broker than that. <laughs> Praying for food. See, some of y'all haven't been there. I had to pray for food. To feed them. Sometimes I couldn't eat. I remember. Amen. Pride is a spirit. It's a demon spirit. And for some folks it's got to be cast out. Some folks it'll never be cast out. But it's a demon spirit. It allows the enemy to reside in you and behave as he did in Isaiah 14 and 11. You desire to be something, to be exonerated, to be lifted up, and prove you are somebody to be recognized, just like the devil. That is pride. Amen? Single folks, single men, single women, if you want God to bless you with a husband or a wife, you got to get rid of pride. You ain't getting nobody, or you're going to get the wrong somebody. You got to put yourself on the clearance aisle, in the discount shelf, if you're prideful. Amen. You can't judge folk by a carnal meter when it comes to marriage. Amen. Got to give you somebody plain James. But that's, a, that's, that's the larva of a butterfly. And you can't see it. Ah, you done looked in too many magazines and too many Instagram accounts. And you don't see the potential. I know I'm preaching. You comparing him to somebody, okay. Comparing her to somebody, okay. That was a deep from the gizzard. Amen. <laughs> it was so funny. After the gizzard, after I mentioned the gizzard service, all the youth was texting me, trying to tell me, we don't have gizzards. That's because a chicken don't have teeth. Ah, that's a, they, they don't have cheese, so they have a gizzard. And the gizzard chew the food up. I learned that from the youth of ABC. You're doing a good job, uh, J. Bryant. I mean, they was all texting me, Pop, that. <laughs> this is what the gizzard does. <laughs> Saw it on wild crats. <laughs> hey, Amen. But I, I love it because they paying attention. I love that. I love that. I love it. Psalms 10 and 4, the wicked through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. So a prideful person is not going to seek after God. And when they do, God is not in his thoughts. Yeah. How do you seek after God and God is not in your thoughts? Because you're seeking after him for what you want. Easy. What's going to make you look better? What's going to make you stand out and give you that pop in life? God don't let you seek him for that. Pride makes you a terrible friend and family member. Ooh. Ter <laughs> terrible friend and family member. You will constantly turn against those that inhibit your desires. You just a honey badger in the spirit. You know, they don't have no friends. 
they kids come up. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's the meanest thing ever. <laughs> Why do they exist? Man, <laughs> fight everything. Lion can whip him, but he just don't want to take the time it takes to whip him. Because he ain't going to ever quit. <laughs> Lion just run. Oh, man, I'm sick of you. Go ahead and take 10 hours for me to recharge. Good gracious. <laughs> That's you in the spirit. Just always getting into it with folks. Because they said something that went against your pride plan. No, oh, look at Kamala in the office. We got a black woman. Uh oh, uh huh. I went all the way there, didn't I? Oh, the black. Look at her. See, look at her. See, look. That makes us all. We all came up. How did you come up? Where are you? Show me your purse. Open your purse and show me what Kamala did. You still busted, and you ain't no queen. She the queen now. Oh, God has raised us up to queen status. Uh oh, he got the Negroes in the office. The first woman, brother. She can't even celebrate it because they don't believe in genders anyway. They bringing in all the transgenders. Everybody the same. They got the women. They want the women playing NFL football. And they want the men transgenders playing the women's sports. How you gonna put a transgender man in the woman's sport? Wrestling. He whip everybody. Y'all caller from Texas is whipping everybody. <laughs> she, she a little burly. <laughs> Got a five o'clock shadow, but she whipping everybody. She piled drop y'all. Oh, 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 oh. She pin him in, in seconds. <laughs> but that call her strong, ain't she? She get up. Oh. <laughs> that's a man. That's a man. Yo, that's a man. That's a man. It's a man. It's a man! But black folks excited just because she look cute in the white. That is so shallow. I see myself uh, when I saw her. I saw myself. I saw the tail. When I saw her, I didn't see you. Not at all. What is wrong? That's pride. All oh, that's pride. The black stuff, pride. Black power and women power. Women empowerment. All oh, that's pride. All oh, that's pride. Have somebody tell me that they will see. Brother, see now. The Black Lives Matter movement. Now, see, you know, I'm, I'm with you, kind of. You know, I'll I be kind of with you. People that talk like that, I'll be like, dude, you're wasting your time because I don't care. Dude, I, I don't care what you think. I don't care about your brain. I don't care about your thoughts. I don't care about nothing about you. Uh, you waste your time, but go ahead. See, the, th see, the Black Lives Matter, see, the movement, see, the movement within itself is not bad. See, what, what happened was the women that started it, now they had an agenda, but the, the, the movement within itself, the in, it's in itself, the Black Lives Matter, because Black Lives do matter. I said, brother, all lives matter. So inherently, it's racist because you can't isolate a people when there are all people that should matter. You don't have to clap and you don't have to come back next Sunday. I don't care. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, black lives matter. Women empowerment. None of that. Women ain't oppressed. Women running everything. All the superheroes women now. Thor is a woman now. I'm Thor a woman. How a woman lifting a hammer. You the woman that Thor is a woman. The equalizer a woman. A equalizer. Everything.
thing is a woman. You girl, y'all don't need no empowerment. Y'all done took over. All them organizations, it's just racism and separatists. That's all it is. And all of that goes against the word. Ah, but brother, let me tell you what they said. They said something else stupid. You don't understand, but even the police, the police within itself, see, the, the idea of cops, the police, the idea of police is wrong because police was created to, to, to police slaves. That's, 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 they, they created the police to police the slaves. I said, well, then who arrested Jesus? I think that happened before the 400 years you talking about. There's always been law enforcement in a land. Are you crazy? I, I don't come here. We don't teach that in here. And if you're talking about it and if you're teaching it, God going to show me I'm going to ask you to leave. We don't do racism in here. Ain't nobody racist in here. You see all these colors and creeds in here. God did that. And he ain't going to let you mess it up. And you going to find yourself on Facebook Live talking about me. Because that's the only place anybody, the five likes you going to get, going to come from. Because you ain't getting liked in here. We don't do that in here. Don't you let me hear about you doing that stupid stuff. I don't preach that. So we ain't doing that in here. Look at somebody and say, we're not doing that in here. No, no, we're not doing that. That's sin. Let me get back on this pride. That's pride, though. Prideful for you to think your color makes you better than somebody. I'm a king. You a broke king. Broke. You know, broke king. I think the title king means money or something like that. But you will talk against and even gossip about others to make yourself look and feel better. That's what pride does. You will become loyal to no one but your own plight. You will even betray those that cared for you because you want what they have or what you feel belongs to you. That's a prideful person. You, that's why you can't keep a prideful person around you. Because they're going to do you wrong. They're only around you because they think you something. Amen. Psalms 105 and 5. Whoso privately slandereth his neighbor, even in private, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart, Will not I? He ain't gonna put up with it. Look at somebody say, God said that. Don't you be privately slandering your neighbor. You're gonna get cut off. Pride will embarrass you. <laughs> Pride will embarrass you. When a person is lifted up in pride, they are preparing for a fall. You don't, have to, you don't have to make them fall. Just sit back. Turn the hourglass over. They will be brought down, shamed, and embarrassed in front of everyone that they attempted to be admired by. Yeah. They will never get what they desired because pride always judges itself. Pride will do it on its own. Don't need your help. Pride will do it. Proverbs 11 and 2. When pride cometh, then cometh what? Shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Pride will lead to substance abuse and secret sins. Yeah, you're struggling with secret sins. You're probably struggling with pride. Because the pride going to keep you from getting the help you need for it. I just preached. That's okay. You don't have to like this. I like it. You like it, bro? I like this. A prideful person knows that they are not who they are trying to be. No matter how much they try to convince you, at the end of the day, they know. Everything in their life is telling them. Their wallet. Goldfish, 
swimming away from them when they walk to the tank. I mean, everything's telling them that this pride thing has got you, bro. You, 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 you ain't all that. Prideful person knows that they are not who they are trying to be. Whenever a person is living a lie, their truth, weakened self, will suffer in private. Their true weakened self will suffer in private. They will have liquor, drugs, or pornographic addictions in private and struggle to break free from this. Also, uh, yeah, they also must hide their imperfections and secret sins, especially if they are exposing others to lift themselves. So you got to hide what they doing to talk about folk, but you got to talk about folks to be proud. That's in the job description. <laughs> yeah, you got to put people down to be better than people. But you yourself in private need to be put down. Yeah, they got to hide their imperfections and secret sins, especially if they are exposing others to lift themselves above them. Pride always brings a person low, publicly and what? Privately. Publicly and privately, pride is going to always make a fool out of you. Proverbs 29 and 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Number five, pride will cause a person to go to hell after this life. Amen. I mean, folk don't want to hear the truth. You going to hell if you, if, if you got the spirit of pride. You live in the spirit of pride, you don't know Jesus. Let me tell you why. Somebody's like, wait a minute, pastor. We can't take pride to heaven. Why would heaven want your pride? Why, the he why would heaven want you? And you prideful. In order to be in Christ, you must first, what? So you can't be in Christ prideful because you must first, what? You are your own way, your own truth, and your own life. Your focus is to be who you desire and not follow Christ's desires for you. In this state, you are reprobate concerning the faith and in sin. If you're living for yourself, you're not saved. Because in order to be saved, you have to first what? Deny yourself. Proverbs 21 and 4. And a high look and proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is what? Uh, I just, I, you're going to argue with the word? A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is what? Sin. And if you're in sin and you die, you go to hell. Summary! To overcome a prideful spirit, you must first recognize that you have done wrong and cost yourself friends, family, jobs, and opportunities. So the first thing, to get rid of this spirit, you got to recognize it's me that's been blowing it. All that blame I've been... Putting here, there, everywhere, all those situations. I've been blaming everybody. It's been me all along. All along. I done lost friends, family, jobs, and most importantly, I lost opportunities. God wanted to use you for something and couldn't because of pride. Because of your pride. Most importantly, you must recognize that pride is a sin. And it has cost you a genuine relationship with the Lord. You heard me say genuine, right? Amen. Prideful people have a pseudo relationship. They can come to church and shout and dance just like you. Yeah. Be on the side of it. When you're getting happy, they're looking at you. <laughs> come get you out your seat, come on, bro. <laughs> just like you. Just like you. <laughs> Just like it, because you know the most proud spirit is the homosexual spirit. That's the most proud spirit. That's proud as a peacock. Because when they walk in, they want everybody. Everybody to see. Direct the choir. Everything they do, they got a rag. Everything. Just direct the choir. How you doing, sister? How you, do how you doing? Just everything is a rag. Everything is a rag. Always. 
Hey, just got to leave home just like this. Just might have to point at somebody. But that's a proud spirit because that spirit is out to prove its own value, that that person is, has value or worth in that state. I know I'm preaching. Yeah. You got to recognize that it's a sin and it's cost you gen a genuine relationship with the Lord. If you're practicing homosexuality, you ain't saved. Okay, how well you can sing. I don't care if when you sing, you tie the church up. Everybody crying, wigs on the ground, everything, everybody just, I mean, you done towed the whole church up with your voice. That means nothing. The devil could had that ability. He was over the heavenly host. The chief musician. So don't show me your talent and think that equals holiness. It doesn't. And it ain't just... If you practice an adultery, fornic, whatever you practice it, you in sin. And if you die, you're going to hell. That's, you can't practice sin and practice righteousness. And if you got an advocate with, a, with the father, but you ain't going to abuse him and think he's just going to save you because you decided to live in that state, you decided against him. He said, you're either for me or against me. When you come to God with pride, you hide your true self from him. So you cost yourself a genuine relationship because with pride, you've hid yourself from him. In order to truly get forgiveness, you must admit who you are and how you have been to him. Look at somebody say, you got to come clean to God. Like, how do you play like something in front of God? Do not be afraid. Listen, y'all. Oh, I hope you can hear this. It's hard for prideful people to hear this because prideful people always think you're talking about somebody else. They come to church every week. Get them, pastor. That's right. Tell them, pastor. Tell them, pastor. <laughs> Didn't I just talk about the hanky? That's right. Then when the music started, they the first one, oh! <laughs> Bro, I was talking about you. <laughs> but a prideful person, they just can't, they can't hear it. It's never about them. I've had them tell me, Brother Witt, see, your, your message, see, you, you, you got a lot of followers, and people know you, man, but man, I have this marketing company. Man, we could just take your message. Now, I mean, we can get it all the way out to Brother, that's pride in you. You ain't even listening to what I'm saying. I mean, don't you want to get it out? Don't you want it to be great? Brother, you, did you, you, so you listened to the, to the message I preached. Yeah, I heard it, man. It was a blessing. You didn't hear that part? <laughs> About lifting myself up? You didn't hear that? Right. A prideful person, they just, when you got that pride you can't hear. Just think, the devil was in heaven with God. You know it was some preaching going on up there. There had to be a cherubim with the mic going in. <laughs> there had to be. I mean, they was having service. And he's right up there and not even hearing. He didn't even hear God when he said he was the creator and above all things. He didn't even hear that part because he thought he could be above him. Can I keep preaching? We're not going to have that kind of church. You're not going to sit in here and not hear. And you got to pray for ears to hear. Amen. Amen. If you don't pray for ears to hear, you'll find something about me that you don't like. And excuse yourself from not doing what is preached. You got to, look at somebody and say, you got to have ears to hear. So do not, listen, this, this is going to be, oh, you got to hear this. Do not be afraid to admit your wrongdoing. The devil is the devil today because he cannot and will never admit he deserves the punishment that's coming to him. That's what makes him the devil. That's what makes there be no hope for him because he'll never admit it. 
People today are taking on his attitude and being too prideful to admit that they did the wrong thing or handled a situation the wrong way. You may have made a bad choice in life, went the wrong way, or fell into the wrong company. You may have fallen into sin or done something against someone you once loved. You may have hurt someone or acted selfishly. Repentance cannot happen without full acknowledgement and responsibility of what was done. This is how you defeat pride. You must own your failure and admit it was wrong to do. Only then will God grant forgiveness to you. Don't worry about what people will say about you or how it will make you look. Chances are you are looking bad already because of how you behaved and handled it. Amen. We are not living for the opinions of men, but for the what? The glory of God. So get back in good standing with him and stop force feeding your defense to others. Stop defending yourself. Repent. Acknowledge. And allow God to deliver you from pride. Whether you bring yourself down now or you allow pride to do it later. Either way, you will be brought down. The word tells us in Luke 18 and 9, a very good parable that's appropriate for this message. And he spoke this parable unto certain which trust in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Speaking of the Pharisees, they thought they were the bomb and better than everybody and they despised folks because they were sinners or publicans and just not their equals. Two men went into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican or a tax collector like. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not like the rest of them, the normal people. The extortioners, the unjust, the adulterers, or even this pub. I mean, he just threw shade right there. Even this dude right here, I'm not like him either. Because I fast twice a week. And I give tithes of all that I possess. But the Bible said the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. But he beat his chest saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. And I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. But he that what? humbleth himself shall be exalted. Everyone stand to your feet. We got to learn to humble ourselves. So listen, this pride thing, it has to go. To overcome 2021, they're coming after your pride this year. They're coming after your pride this year. They want to know if you're going to stand up in front of everybody. Are you going to stand for God in front of everyone? They're coming after that. So we got to make sure we don't have pride anywhere in our hearts. We got to make sure we don't have pride anywhere in our lives. Don't be prideful. Don't be prideful. Amen? Look, you know, the Internet is the perfect place for people to go on and really show their tails and they go on there and try to be prideful and show things and they show that like I talked about in part 13 they show the highlight reel try to make you think they have this and that or they get mad at somebody they go on there and talk about whatever the case or they post things and some people in here you got to be careful with that just posting where you are now because you came from a bad state and now you want people to know that everything's okay whatever look that's pride. All of that's pride, and it opens the door for demonic attacks. Because if you have pride, you've opened the door to the devil. So you don't have to prove your value to anyone. You don't have to prove your worth to anyone. You don't have to show anybody how well you're doing. 
You don't have to show anybody what you have and what God has given. You don't have to show any of that. Let it come to you. God will prove you. He said, if you humble yourself, he will exalt you. Let God do it. Amen? Amen. Everyone bow your heads. I'm not going to call you up because everybody needs this. But, you know, we all want to feel good. We all want to show, you know, I ain't out here just wilding. God has done some great things, but we have to make sure we're not doing it with the wrong motive internally and trying to show someone that said we wouldn't have something or trying to show someone that said we wouldn't be somewhere. And we're there now. We have to make sure all of that's pride and the devil will creep in. So with your heads bowed, Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come before you just humbly as your people, as humans on this earth trying our best to live up to your godly standard. Father God, none of us are perfect. None of us are better than anyone else. We're not even putting ourselves in a special category. We're not special because we're black. We're not the chosen ones and the this and the that. None of that. None of that matters to you. When you see us, you either see your son's blood or you see our blood. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, because those things don't matter to you. You can bless anyone, use anyone, and save anyone that you choose. But Father, right now, we come before you just as people, Lord. Some of us have just had tumultuous backgrounds and traumatic past, and all kinds of things have happened to us, and people have spoken all kinds of evil things on us, and We've come from just all kinds of situations and circumstances that lead us to sometimes want to justify ourselves, defend ourselves, or show ourselves in front of someone else. God, some, some of us have just been hurt by others and authorities and, and parents and relatives and husbands and wives. God, we've, some have just even been abused. And so, God, it's just easy for us to just try to show someone, hey, I'm better than you said. I'm doing better than you said. For all those that said that I wouldn't, I now have. So, Father God, we want you to take all that away from us. We don't want anything in the way of us being able to deny ourselves. We must deny ourselves before you, God. So we, must be, we want to be able to come before you just open and honest, revealing our deepest, our deepest issues to you, Lord. We know you know, but you want us to give them to you and speak it and come transparent to you. So, Father, I pray right now that you would give us all the grace to be able to submit and be humble and not lift it up in pride. God, we cast down the spirit of pride right now. Every high thing, we cast it down. Every thought, we take it captive, God, and bring it under the authority of jesus christ we bring it under your power right now father god every spirit every proud spirit father god every luciferian spirit god every masonic spirit god every spirit of fraternities and sororities every pledge that was taken to make us better than someone else father we cast it down right now father god all the language that was used anything that was spoken over us any word curse anyone that put strive in us that pushed us to our to, to be better than someone else. God, we cast all that down right now. Those that prophesied our greatness and said we would be great and we believed it and we went on a, a, a mission to try to prove it. God, we cast that down right now. God, we are not trying to be the best. The spirit of being the best. We cast that down right now. We're only supposed to do our best not be the best the spirit of human doing we cast that down right now father god everything that was spoken even in our development as as young children father god if it was put in us to be better to show out to prove something to others so that whoever was pushing us could look better father we cast that down right now god we deny ourselves right now Every dream book, Father God, every uh, 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 wish board and vision board and just all of that witchcraft, we cast it down right now in the name of Jesus. The devil will not put strive in our lives and push us, Father God, but we'll only move as you say move. In the name of Jesus. And we won't resist what you need to do to us, God. 
but we'll receive it. We'll receive it. Come on, lift your hands up. If you want to, we'll receive it. We'll receive it. We're not pushing back. We'll receive it because we know you know what's best for us. You know what's best for us. So, Father God, we're not trying to put together a plan to take over. We cast down the seven mountain mandate. That heresy, we cast that down right now. Father God, we're not trying to be any of those things, but we will follow you where you want us to go. And as you open doors, we'll go through them. And as you close doors, we'll avoid them. So, Father, bless us with what we're supposed to have. Bless us with the things we're supposed to have from you. That we will not strive for anything that you don't want for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this message of cleansing. Thank you for this message of acknowledgement. Thank you for a message like this, Father God, to hit us right where it needs to. So that we can change things now and benefit from them later. In Jesus' name we pray.